What's up guys, it's Joseph, and in this video I'm going to be doing a bit of comparison between these three very good options as home defense pistols. I have a CZ P10F, so F means full size, and this is the optic ready version. This is fully stock except for this uh, talon grip piece that I put on both sides. In the middle is a Glock G34 Gen 5. This one has a 4.5 inch barrel, this one is a 5.3 inch barrel and then this is the new Walther PDP in full size so it says full size here with the 5 inch barrel I also have a Shadow Systems MR920 back here this one is not really going to be included in the comparison because I have done a lot of modification to this one but I did take all four of them to the range so it'll be a little bit of comparison with uh, this MR920. As far as the dimensions, they're all very similar. Um, maybe I'll do a little bit of side by side like this. So you can see the Glock is a little bit longer, obviously, and then comparing the Glock to the Walther PDP. These have um, almost identical uh, sight radius, which means like the distance from the front sight to the, to the rear sight. And then side by side, very similar. I'm not gonna get like into millimeters or anything. Over a year ago, I made a video called the best home defense pistol under $500 and I recommended the CZ P10F uh, for anyone who has like a normal hand strength. I, I also have a, another video talking about like if you have reduced hand strength, I basically recommended the M&P 380 Easy. But um, for most people, this is a really great option. But after trying out the new Walther PDP, I felt like I needed to make an update video on that. I'm going to start off with some specs because this will lead into the shooting experience discussion. The CZ P10F and the new Walther PDP come in at a very similar price point. Because the CZ P10F doesn't come with the optic adapter plate for putting on a red dot. I, and I highly recommend uh, putting a red dot on a home defense gun. You'd probably be able to find the P10F at about 550, but then the plate itself costs like about 70 bucks. So this gun is slightly more expensive than the Walther PDP, and then the Gen 34 is a little bit out of discussion because it's at 700 dollars, generally speaking. But unless you're active duty, then you might be able to find this um, at Blue Label pricing, which which reduces the cost a lot and it makes these all very comparable price-wise. If you start off, here are some of the empty weights. P10F is a little bit heavier, but these are almost identical in empty weight. And then I also added in the, the weight with the full magazine. This is the magazine um, capacity, CZ having the most with 19. And this is stock, of course. You can get like 33 round magazines for the Glock, put on extensions and have 24 round mags for the P10F as I've showed before. And the PDP comes stock with 18 round magazines. Um, all very comparable still though. And uh, I guess that, that brings up the point of when I first uh, saw this pistol, I thought it might be very um, front heavy because of how long and like wide the slide looks. But once you have a fully loaded magazine, it feels very balanced in your hands. And this is basically uh, where the real story starts, is in the stock trigger pulls. The CZ, in my opinion, has a very good trigger, but if we go down the list, the Glock's trigger is not that great. Here we have the PDP, and this comes in at a just only four and a half pound trigger pull, and you can really feel the difference. This was like the determining factor in in my group sizes that I got at seven yards. Here at target two, this is at seven yards with the PMC bronze ammo which was 115 grain and the CZ gave me a 1 and 3 16 inch group and over here is the Glock 34 so a pretty neat group uh, that's 1 and 1 16 inch over here is the Shadow Systems group this one is kinda cheating obviously because this one does have a, a red dot on it and I've zeroed it all the groups were within that middle circle and that was a, a 3 16 inch group over here you can see the Walther PDP produced the smallest group with all the hits right there and that's a 10 16th inch group and I think so the trigger really played a huge role because you can hold the gun very still as you're pulling the trigger I did get some measurements with a Mantis uh, X10 Elite that I have a review on my channel and what it does is it it measures the 
the movement of the pistol when you're shooting. These I would take with a, a grain of salt because uh, I wasn't doing my best um, recoil control that day. Like I, I have to admit, I didn't really lock my wrist that well. The P10, the Glock, and the Shadow all had pretty similar uh, muzzle rise. The PDP does have a bit of uh, snap to it. What makes sense is that the barrel is riding a lot higher compared to like, let's say the CZ where the CZ, it lets you get a really high grip. So the barrel is, is barely riding higher than where you're gripping. But then uh, I have some measurements of uh, recovery time because the, the Mantis uh, can also measure like from after you fire until when you return to the, the center where I was aiming. Oddly enough, even with the most uh, muzzle rise, the Walter PDP produced um, the lowest number in recovery time, so that's half a second. By the way, this is uh, obviously five shot groups like you saw in here. And then these were uh, dif a different set of four shot groups. The most important thing to me when it comes to a home defense pistol is reliability. All of these have proven to be very reliable pistols. So I've personally uh, gone through this uh, over a thousand rounds with my P10F and I haven't had one single malfunction in it. I haven't, I don't have quite as many rounds with my uh, G34, but no failures with this one. Glock is known for being a very reliable polymer frame pistol. And the Walter PDP, I'm gonna reference Honest Outlaw, another YouTube channel that, you know, I watch a lot of his videos. He went uh, over a thousand rounds with the Walter PDP, and he only had one of, I think I, it was a failure to eject, and that was also with uh, remanufactured ammo, so one failure in a thousand is pretty good. Another pistol that's somewhat comparable to, to these is the Canik TP9 SFX which I did own for a time, but I actually um, sold it after I was getting a lot of uh, failures to cycle with that pistol. And it turns out they're made to run with NATO 9mm, which is a little bit um, hotter shooting. It, ne it kind of needs that to cycle with the stock spring, although you can request a, a softer um, recoil spring for the Canik, but I didn't get around to trying that. Um, I just sold it. And since the trigger is uh, pretty different on these, I'll go ahead and have you uh, ghost the triggers with me, as Grantham would say. So here is uh, the wall, hard wall, brake, reset. Pretty much everyone knows that stock lock triggers aren't that great, but they work. So here's a wall, a little bit of um, mush, then the brake. But this gun does have a lot of potential, just because there's so many upgrades available. The wall. So a little bit of creep, break, but the difference is how soft you have to pull to get that break. It's, it's a noticeable difference between even this and the P10. All of these have very nice slides and all have uh, front serrations, which I really prefer a gun to have. I do go over here and manipulate uh, with a front slide pretty often. These are pretty aggressive. With the Glock, it's not aggressive at all. And maybe if you had like very thick gloves, that might be an issue uh, where your finger couldn't like get into those uh, serrated parts. And the PDP has very nice serrations where they're aggressive, but they're not sharp. Actually, that is a little bit of an issue with these kind of feel sharp. These are not sharp at all. And the sights, this comes with a night sight on, at the front, a blacked out rear, uh, very functional Glocks, just uh, plastic sights. I think these are polymer sights as well, and they're uh, Glock compatible, so you can um, upgrade them pretty easily. This one is also adjustable for elevation, and this one for, for windage. So maybe you can see there's a little screws there. I haven't tried that yet, but just because I didn't have time when I went to the range. The position and size of the slide releases on these has not been an issue for me at all. I haven't had any accidental slide locking back or, or not um, holding open after the last round on any of these. So Walter PDP fits very nicely with my grip where it's like just above uh, where I put my hands. The grip angle is a little bit different. This one points very naturally. If you don't train at all and then you go and point this, 
it's gonna it's gonna pretty much point where you want it to. Same with the PDP, a very uh, probably the best feeling grip when it, when you do a two hand grip. It points very naturally, just like the CZ. Uh, the weird one out of these is gonna be the the Glock grip angles. These ones are pretty close to uh, 18 degree grip angles, and then the Glock is called a 22 degree grip angle. This one is more steep, so what happens is when you go and point. If you're not used to Glocks, you're going to point a little bit high and you're going to have to like flex your wrist to make it line up. But actually that, what I've come to find is that's actually somewhat of a good thing because when you're flexing your wrist, that up actually helps you uh, control the recoil a little bit better. The texture, this has a very good texture everywhere except this was a big blank spot where it was like really smooth, so hence why I added in these Talon grips. The texture on Glocks pretty much suck, so, but they do sell Talon grips where you can wrap it around the whole grip. And the texture on this is very nice, so it's um, pretty aggressive, but not sharp. Um, not too rough for anyone's hands, I, I couldn't imagine. And I really like that the, you can see that the stippling goes all the way up here, which is, where is exactly where the base of your palm should go. All of these have uh, interchangeable back straps for different size hands. Let's kind of go back to the front. You can see that it has two slots of Picatinny. The Glock will have one slot. And then this obviously has the most slots of Picatinny. For example, that's what you use to put on like a light so that you have a light. And if we go back to the trigger guard, really nice size trigger guard, a big open one, just like the P10. The Glock is a little bit smaller. Slide release on, on both sides, on all three of these pistols. And as far as mounting a red dot, and for those that don't know, this is a red dot, so you can see the red dot floating in space, which will, and this will attach to the top of your, your gun, and it helps you aim really easily because there's only one point to look at instead of the front and rear sights. The adapter plates, this one doesn't come with any, so you do have to find your own online, depending on which red dot you have. And this one does come with uh, four adapter plates. So this one doesn't come with plates, but you don't have to go and search for them. Walther will send you the adapter that you need for your optic. That's pretty much the end of the comparison. So my conclusion is that for the money out of the box, the Walther PDP is probably the, the pistol I'll be recommending for um, a really good, nice home defense pistol. So the CZP-10F is obviously still really good. The Glock 34 has a lot of potential in um, all the upgrades that you can throw at it. So if you guys have any questions, you can leave that in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Please like, subscribe, and share. And I'll talk to you guys later. There's your 5-inch barrel. That's all I have for you guys. Unless I post this today and... Then um, please go down in the description and follow the link to leave a comment, the ATF, on how you feel about them banning braced pistols. So, uh, yeah, if you haven't done that yet, there's only uh, two days left, I think. And uh, we, all, we all need to uh, leave a comment on that to um, maybe try and stop it. Alright, that's it.